exactly today. I made a few changes to the microphone and the mixer and I think the level may be a little too low. Let me see if this one is better. Yeah, we should be there. Giving it a few minutes to make sure everybody gets on board. It turns out that spending time setting up at the beginning of the stream ends up meaning a short stream afterwards. So this time I'm doing it a little earlier. Today's topic is ESP Home and Home Assistant. In particular, I have a pull request for ESP Home, but I need to finish and clean up so that I can actually get it merged. And I haven't merged it yet. Um, it's funny, sorry, it's actually a very simple change, but I haven't had, I haven't sat down to do the change in a long while. And I thought of doing this earlier on the week of streams, and then it just got shuffled behind the, I want USB mount tools to work. No, oh, look, and paper is broken. Um, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be addressed. So in the meantime, so they don't really have much of a cut. No, I can start with a cut video because let's remember we are doing this as a fundraiser for cats protection. And so you're welcome to donate on playmite.com slash cats goes to Tiltify. As I promised, if we hit the thousand pound mark, I'm going to start streaming from Linux and I'll write a whole blog post detailing the results, which is likely going to be hilarious knowing just how much of a mess this is going to be. Um, this used to be my day job um, many, many years ago before the previous bubble. Um, I work in real-time video streaming and so I have quite a bit of experience on setting up streams from Linux and I hit them um, in a good way because I know all of the problems that can come up and fail out of that. And see, I checked this before starting and still managed to get it wrong. Magical edge. Um, yeah. I said on Monday that in, like in Italy at my mom's place, we used to have at some point 17 cats. This picture is of Messner, who was the last of the family because all 17 of the cats, um, well, more than 17, 17 was what we had at one time. Like, I think Mesden was not counted in the 17, actually. They were all kittens from the same cat that my sister found on the street one day, I think in 1990... I want to say 1992? Probably 1993? Yeah, probably 1993, because it was the year after my grandfather died. Um, and from her, who looked a lot like Mesner, but this one is Mesner, um, from her we ended up having multiple generations of cats. Mesner was the youngest. Yes, you can hear that the Marcus is still making noise. Sorry, folks. Um, Mesner was the youngest. And you can see her like play with our German Shepherd back then. She was just a few weeks old. Like she was so tiny and so climbing. That's why we called her Mesner after Reinhold Mesner, the Italian mountaineer. Because one day we were looking for her, we were afraid where did she go? And she was climbing spider cat style on the outside wall behind the open door we left for them so she was sandwiched between the door and the wall and she was just climbing up she really liked to climb there you go very tiny mesner a little older mesner you can tell that things change this picture and the previous ones were all made on actual film 
so proper reflex camera on 35 millimeter film like old school but good quality and then we go to one of the early smartphones i think this was my motorola v300 but i'm not even sure and like if you don't know the v300 don't worry nobody does it was a brand that they used only on Vodafone Italy. I don't remember the actual name of the model um, from Motorola. It was before the Razer. It's a bit more modern, not really well focused. And here she goes. It's already on like modern, decent quality. And it's fair really well into the digital camera quality. What do you want? And yeah, the last few years she used to live inside. She didn't live outside anymore. But she wanted to have the cushion covered properly with paper. Otherwise she wouldn't be jumping on it. Funny story about this picture, if you were one of the very few users of Google Contributor back when it was a thing, you may have seen her in this picture because this was one of the pictures um, that I con I contributed a couple of pictures of MassNet for the selection of cats that you could have used to replace the ads. And this was one of them. I don't remember what the others were, but I really liked this one. And actually this one used to I should have been here a Molino Bianco logo, but of course to be able to submit it, I photoshopped it away. She never liked being photographed unless she wanted to. So in this case, she actually proper set herself in pose. Otherwise she would be like, nope, no picture. Do you really need to take this picture? Yes, I do. Anyway, cat content for the day. Let's go on. So I was saying I have some changes for ESP Home, which for those who are not aware, it is an interesting standard-ish firmware that allows a, a bunch of components that are pre-made and it's designed to be flashed on smartphone devices that use the ESP42 or ESP8266 chips. And that's a lot of them because it's a very cheap chip. Uh, it's not quite a chip actually, it's a module more than a chip. I do have an expressive room for the two over here. We do have a chip inside. You can even use just a chip if you want, but I do have any modules because I have a bunch of projects all over that use the module version of this. And the module version is handy because all of the Wi-Fi support and antenna are on the module itself. You don't really need to um, care about any of that, you just solder the module on and they do have one of those um, dev kits that you can connect over USB and you get pinouts and you can do whatever you want with them. I use one of these as a BLE bridge so that you can listen to the BLE broadcast from some of the thermometers and indeed this chair is a bit annoying so stand up and move it. Stand in that mode and I can move the chair away. So, um, ESP Home is very handy to get stuff uh, sorted in. What happens is that I do have a pull request for it that I haven't touched in too long, that needs to be merged, and it is about the CGG1 sensors. Now, I have blogged about this. Yeah, I have blogged about Home Assistant and CGG1 sensors. Uh, the sensors are very simple. They are just a round disk with a ink display and they report temperature and humidity. 
Some of them report battery state over BLE as well. They're awful. Well, on what regard? Like the, the, the battery doesn't tell you anything. Like it goes from 80% to 13% and then stay there for months and they keep working. I'm not surprised that they just stop sending the battery state later on. I'm probably going to just remove it from all of my configs because yeah, they're not useful. Um, anyway, the new version turned out to be needing a, I think it's at the bottom of this one. Yeah, the new version, as you can see here, um, turned out to be encrypted. The older version didn't need an encryption key, the new one does. Um, and this is the thing that has a problem. So there is a ESP Home pull request that has been approved. There is a ESP Home docs that is not approved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by cloning this again um, in a WSL environment because it's just easier. And then I'll make a new workplace and start like workspace in um, in Visual Studio and we'll get on from there. So let's start doing that. Git clone ESP home docs. Git remote add. I'm following a convention of using GitHub for the name of a remote that goes into my own account for a simplish reason, which is a, I don't think I have it installed over here. Do I have it installed? I don't have it installed here, but I often use Um, I often use git pull request um, tool to create pull requests, which pretty much just allows you to take the, um, to, to set up the whole pull request from the host instead of having to send it separately. I don't have it installed here, so let me install it. Oh, it's free. Okay, there is an old tip wrapper on this Debian. Um, I've been considering the idea of just doing a stream at some point of me trying to reinstall Gentle Linux in a virtual machine and just see, can I even manage to reinstall my own Gentle Linux? Um, I'm not planning to do that anytime soon, but who knows, we'll see. So yeah, git pull request, um, I find it magic. I'm still going to have issues trying to do it from here and all that. Um, then the keychain integration is a bit sketchy. It's okay, I don't need to do it now. But because of that, when I add a remote, I call it GitHub. Okay, so this does the main part. And if you're curious of why I'm, why I'm using the command line to do this is because I realized there are a few things. Um, no, I don't want the dev container. Do I want the dev container? No, I don't do it. Mm -hmm. The opening container. Oh, I don't have a Docker backend for WSL2. I don't care. Um, it's still on the display. Anyway, there are some paths that I don't like showing people on stream. It's nothing like important or private or anything. It's just like I don't like throwing host names around if I don't have to. And this is the other cool feature of this, which is save as SAS. And I should probably not have put it in the directory. I'll see. Yeah. 
Okay, workspace as I'll just call it here so we have workspace and we'll give it this style. The workspaces are an interesting feature of Visual Studio Code because you can say, hey, I want these two um, folders, directories, each repositories, open at the same time, ESP home and ESP home docs. It will jump between them as needed. But it also still maintains the fact that there are separate Git repositories, so you don't lose any contact with that, which is very handy. So the problem with ESP Home Docs is that it needs to be against the next. Yeah, it needs to be next because it's a new feature. It's adding support for rebind key. It's a normal new terminal on ESP Home Docs, git patch all. And then this is for my score, and so this is GitHub current. No, I don't have Git switch on this one. Okay. This is where I then don't remember anymore how to do this with the old oh git checkout dash p right? Yep. And yes, this has the instructions. So git pull rebase origin next. And they have all kind of git reset, git rebase abort. <sighs> uh, git log. Update docs around CGG1. Yeah, that's the one I want. Oh yeah, it was two commits, wasn't it? Yeah, it's two commits. So this is the first one. And this is the second one. So I'm going to create another branch. Oh, I made a mess. Sorry. And it cannot apply the second one. Okay. Let's see where. Uh, sure, enable pylint. That's not what I want right now. Yes, keep enabling pylint. I don't care about that right now. This is restructured text. It's not Python, so I don't know why it's asking me for that. This is what it says. Okay, so this one has. Okay, this is where it changed. This is the part where it changed it before, which was just to set up an encrypted look at the instructions, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if I accept the, this one was, GD1, to do, do, do. 
I think that's the one I want. Sim, okay, save this one. Hit cherry pick continue. Okay, let me sh see this one if that's what it is. Oh, they changed the whole thing. Obtaining Banky. Oh, this is really bad. Uh, HW? No. Let's go up to the more diff. Do I have a way to enable word diff? Yeah, word diff. Oh yeah, this removes the reference to the um, SSL packet sniffer because that doesn't work anymore because we bound the app. So that's fine. Is that the only thing that I had? Yeah, that was fine. That one I don't care. So git cherry pick abort. Uh -huh. I only need this one, the other part was already fixed. Uh, oh yeah, and I cannot edit the pull request from Edge, which is the one I'm streaming. I need to do it from my actually logged in account, which is on Chrome. Can edit. I need to push to play my score. Okay. That's kind of horrible but I guess it will have to do Yeah, first update to that one. Change base. Okay. And this part is gone and thank you to Ivan from yesterday who I forgot to thank and thanks you uh, to Insomniac today for your donation we are still here fundraising for cats protection and as I said yesterday and the day before if we get to 1000 pound I'll be streaming from Linux and ranting all the way about it because I'm sure there is planning to rant although I'm fairly sure the microphone will work fine because I checked this particular USB um, sound card works great on Linux. Also, right? Um, so let's go back to the pull request. The pull request will be now ready. Yeah, there we go. It's updated. It's set to next. It's no longer on current. And this should be all good. On this side. On the other side, this one is ESP Home on CGG1 Ank. So let's go and make sure that one is also rebased, just in case there is any problem with that, because it's always nice to have easy merge for people. So hit fetch all and get checked out. And this one needs to be rebased on ESP on origin that 
look at no origin space that oh i actually have conflicts merge conflict on sensor of by um okay see good thing that i checked In sensor.py, I did add the bind here. That's the only thing I added on that block over there. This one changed significantly, so let's do that. So this was conf bind key, and I guess I need to keep it in order now. So accept current change. And yes, this is the way you deal with conflict when you pull, if anybody has not done this before. And on the second part, this part over here with the config schema, I was adding the bind key, which is this thing over here. Um, yeah, so that goes over here because these are not quite in order, but it should do. Yep, and accept current key, current change, and get add that. Is that the only thing? Yeah, that's the only yeah. A dot git the base continue. That was the only ch oh, two changes. Ah, yeah, okay. And git push GitHub. Oh, I will probably have to force it right here. Yeah. Git push force GitHub. And now back on this pull request as well. And this first part is done in exactly halfway through the stream, so that's good. Now let's go back a moment to see the other part of the stream that I wanted to talk about, which is Home Assistant. If you haven't seen Home Assistant before, it is, I will say, a fairly awesome project, not just from the technical point of view, but I think that they did a very good job at building a good community around this. Beside the conference, but I didn't want to attend, the Home Assistant Blue is a beautiful piece of kit. I actually do have one. I will talk about it. Um, they have a very nice forum with a lot of information. They have documentation, which is fairly well written. I say fairly well because some of the things could be a little clearer, I will say. It makes a lot more sense when you spend time into the, um, the tool, but otherwise it gets a little bit more um, complicated. But overall has a lot of support for a lot of different things. It basically allows you to integrate with most, not all, but most of the um, Internet of Things smart home devices you can think of, including, as you can see here, the Google Cast, the Hue Lighting, um, Shelly plugs and switches. They have MQTT support, I, the Kia Tratfi, Kodi, I haven't tried anything from anybody else. Um, I do have a few others like LifeX, which I use for two other lines at home. I used to have more of those. It's awesome from that point of view. And can I actually show you my? Can I? I'm just checking if there is anything that I should not be showing before I go for that. No, there is nothing I can show on it. So let me do that. If it allows me. It does not appear to. Okay. It does not allow me to do that. 
We cannot do that. I cannot show it to you right now, but um, I can take a screenshot and show you that. This is a screenshot of how it looks right now. This is the home assistant we use here at home. Both me and my wife have access to it. It has control for a bunch of things that we have. Um, you can see that we have buttons that switch on Kodi, Switch, PS4, and Portal, and so on. Those are very handy, particularly the Portal one, because every time we have a Portal TV, not because I work where I work, um, I got the Portal TV before I joined my current bubble. I have set it up on the HDMI switch, which is cascaded off the TV. It's handy to have it there because there is a little bit of delay on the switch, but it doesn't really matter. But when people called us, we were always scrambling for where is the remote control to turn on the TV, turn on the switch, set up everything. And a few months ago, I spoke about how I was trying to get everything integrated and I was saying that I was hoping eventually to get it integrated with Home Assistant, which is what we, what we did here. So if we were to click one of the buttons that select Kodi, Chromecast, and so on, what it does is a script that goes and turns on the, turns on the TV, which is easy, it turns on the Yamaha receiver, which is like that one is already like the Yamaha receiver is already included as part of the um, of the configuration of the standard base of components that Home Assistants provide. It selects the right input on the TV, which turned out to require a remote control code, but is not present on the remote control we have with the TV. It's a separate remote control, like it's a separate command. Um, you can cycle through the inputs um, on pretty much any remote control. But if you want to actually select the HDMI 1 or HDMI 2 inputs, there is a code which is the same since the 80s. So if you have a very old remote control, you may have it, or otherwise you need to fake it. Uh, what I did is I faked it and I, I, I wanted to show that. Um, and I'll show that in a moment. The other thing that this thing does is it selects your right input on the HDMI switch, which turned out to be even funnier because that one, it sends the same code as the remote control would send, but it actually does that straight through the cable. So it doesn't actually go through on the um, infrared at all, which is both easier and harder. The good thing is I'm going to release all of that source code. The best thing is I actually was planning to release that source code today on stream. So that's what I'm going to try to be doing now because I can. First, I got all the authorization to be able to do that. Uh, and second, I really want to because what's the point of me just hoarding it for myself? Uh, the other thing that this thing has that is worthy of note is over here where I'm moving my mouse, which is this uncollected packages. Um, we live in a building that has a concierge downstairs, and this was a intentional move um, because of coronavirus. This reduced, you reduced significantly the amount of people we had to interact with um, to receive packages and stuff, which was good and important, even that I, well, I, I have been at risk, kind of, I'm still at risk. I got vaccinated, but still, diabetes makes it a risk overall. And one of the things that the consumer service of this building has is, um, in the, I found a few years ago that it's called the Computer Assisted Facilities Management, CAFM software. Uh, and the one they have is by a company called Locale LTD, which is this one. They, they don't say much about what it is, but you can see that it monitors and log deliveries and instantly notify recipients or occupiers. As far as I know, the only two things that our CAFM have are the 
keys and delivery support. The documents don't go to us because we are tenants, we don't own the place. Uh, and everything else, I don't think it's actually enabled for our building. I don't know why. But um, that means that they have this CAFM thing. I'm fairly sure this picture is from somewhere in King's Cross, by the way. Because I've worked there long enough that they recognize the place. Um, this is their whatever. Um, I think Inhabit may be the name of their software. I'm not quite sure. There isn't really much information about it, but what I did is this system is generally meant to send us email to tell us that we have a package to pick up. It's a 50-50 chance that the email will arrive. I'm never sure if it is because the concierge doesn't always send it or if it is because the system just drops it on the floor at times. But we found it annoying. We could log in every time of the system because we have a login access and it will tell us if we have any uncollected packages. But I found that annoying. Um, so what I ended up doing was I wrote a Home Assistant component, which again, I had now the authorization to release, so I will be <laughs> releasing. Hopefully we'll do that tonight now. Um, and let's see if I can actually open the right file. And essentially it scrapes the website which has the, the list of, pass of parcels that needs to be picked up. And if there is any parcel, it will update this counter. If there is a parcel, if there are more than one parcel between the two of us, which means that either of us receive the parcel, they are counted separately. If either of us receive a parcel, then it sends a notification to our phones. It's a permanent notification with a count. Uh, which is handy because sometimes uh, like we accumulate packages and we don't know how many we need to pick up. Again, this doesn't always work because today I picked up two parcels but the system was telling me that there was only one to pick up. It's not complete science. I could easily just change this to, hey, you have something to pick up and no, you don't have anything to pick up. That goes beyond the point. This is a custom component that literally just scrapes the deliveries thing and then goes on and tell me if there is anything. I want to release it as open source because again I have no reason not to first and second I have the authorization for it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to release it under um, MIT license most likely or Apache 2 license probably Apache 2 license because that's usually more palatable. Um, it's going to keep my copyright for a moment because, as I said, I got it approved to be released. I don't really need anything out of it. Um, I just want to make sure that it is out there. It doesn't really use any API. Maybe the company has an API and I don't know about it. I will ask them afterwards. They can say, hey, folks, by the way, I released a scraper for it. Please don't break it. And if I use an API, please let me know. I don't see why they shouldn't allow me to do that. So let's do that. Um, without further ado, as some of the streamers say, and then now just trying to wonder how am I going to do this? Because I have, well, I can copy this. Let's go back to our source code then. I have about half an hour. Here we are coding. This is the this is a different project of mine, which is the JLC PCB exporter. Again, this is also my own source code and everything. By the way, this time I'm going to do it locally because I don't really need this to be on um, Linux. Like it runs on home, home assistant on Linux. Doesn't have to need doesn't need any of that. So I'm going to start. Oh, there is a checklist for creating a component. So let's let's look at that. Um, follow the style guide. Uh, use existing constants. Yeah. 
for the scheme at present for yeah not all the existing code follows this don't use it as an excuse not to this is going to be released as a custom component for myself first uh, among other things because they don't allow scrapers they also have with these requirements they don't want to be posted on github you need to upload it to PyPy, so oh, you need to release everything which is very sensible that's what i was saying with it's not just a good project technically it has a very healthy ecosystem the don't try to hard code stuff into your module code just make a library out of it and publish it on PyPy so you can use it for anything else is a great way in my opinion to do this um, this is fine <sighs> i want to be able to release it as a separate thing because i don't think it's going to be like as i said it, i know it goes against <sighs> i know there are ways to get the not the addons but the components separate okay the separate documentation checklist there is the hacks integration uh, oh i guess it needs to be under custom underscore components there, there are a few ways around it Uh, custom repositories, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't tell me much on how to add this view garage. Developer docs. No. Okay, yeah. General. Okay, it needs to have a readme. It's, it has a hat. There are a bunch of things that you can do for that. I don't need most of that. I will just start with a very basic one. I will just have it cloned into my own custom components afterwards, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'll figure out how to merge all of it together afterwards. For now, let me just publish the code, right? So let me start by creating a new repository. It's going to be New repository, repository name. Checking what name I gave it. I call it locale deliveries. repository and now I can actually open and show you what I'm doing yeah these are oh you don't actually see my open dialog um, I have a bunch of different repositories here some of which I can talk about and some of which not easily this one I don't want 
Okay, now we have a completely new and empty um, repository except for git attributes. For the normalization, I don't know if it's needed, we'll see. Uh, and I'm going to open And I'm going to open this simply because it's easier this way to get the uh, that is 2021. I'm going to license with zero BSD all the files that don't really need to have anything interesting in them. New terminal over here. Going to reveal this in File Explorer. I'm going to drop a bunch of code into it. Yes, I'm actually accessing my home assistant um, via Samba Share. And as I say, they want everything else to be licensed under Apache 2. Let me make sure this is the right SPDX weight. Yes, it is Apache 2 by now. Uh, yeah, I cannot find Home Assistant for obvious reasons because it doesn't know how to deal with that right now. And this is probably not the best way to write most of the code over here. It also does, like, it doesn't know what has is or anything. I know that the code works. It's not the cleanest of the code, but I'm going to publish it as it is, and then we'll see how the rest goes. Um, uh, this is Jason. Before I release it, let me just make sure I check one thing, which is what's the default license for the assistant itself? I think it is MIT. GitHub. No, it's a budget shoot, so that's perfect. And in JSON, I don't remember how to add the header, so let me do the right thing in a moment. Uh, the rest is added. And yes, this is a beautiful suit, which is, again, kind of horrible. Let me install reuse tool. Uh, no matching option for the reuse tool. So just reuse. Surgeon told me how to configure this thing so that Control K works again. I don't remember how. I need to actually write it down. I know that I promised months ago a blog post about my Windows setup. I did post some of the notes on the YouTube video where I archive the Twitch stream for it. I should still do that blog post. So, yeah, I'll try to get to that eventually. Um, I do currently have a very short um, backlog of posts that need to be published. So maybe I should be starting typing that. But this week has been dedicated to the cat protection streams. So thank you again for all the folks who donated. And if you haven't donated and you're watching this now, please join us and let's find forever homes for unwanted cats um, because there is always somebody who wants a cat we would like to have a cat we cannot have a cat well we would like to have two cats because cats tend to be very lonely if they are alone so we would like two cats that way they will feel less lonely yeah so uh, reuse tool is installed so reuse 
cut header license Apache 2.0 copyright it should be working year 2021 and then custom component local deliveries um, manifest.json is it not in the path? it's not in the path I need to change it. Oh, I need to update to Python 3.9 as well. Um, PowerShell, how to set environment variable. I don't actually know because. Oh, dot env path. No, oh, but it does plus equal. So this one is not needed. Awesome. Does this work now? Yes, it does. Module not. No module name PWD. Yeah, so that's the other thing we reuse and with free software in general. And you can get, you, you'll take a little bit of a run from me right now. How much of this has been, why is reuse even needing to import PWD? Has anybody tested this on Windows? Does anybody care? So let's see for a moment why this is even needed. FSFE reuse tool say site packages debian change log oh because it's not part of this package it's part of a debian module yeah so it uses pypy debian let's see pypy debian debian 001 Maintainers deleted user. I have a feeling that this thing is not the right thing. Python dash Debian. Better. Oh, I actually know the maintainer. Well, one of the two. Philip, if you ever see this one, you'll hear me cursing in a moment. Um, Project link, it's on Salsa. So if you if you look here, lib Debian change log to py work. Okay, there you go. Yay! It's it's fixed already. Thank you, Stuart. Now the question is: Is there a new version being released? When was this was fixed a month ago? When was the last release of this made? Twenty twenty, uh, December. Okay. Uh, let me see, and I'll do this live, if I can find Stuart. Uh, not easy, it seems. Yeah, I steward, but I don't know how to find him. To contact him. But at least he's active, so I will probably send an email and see if I can get a new release of this one. Otherwise, reuse doesn't work on. Um, Windows at all, and I do need reuse to work on Windows. Uh, how do you set the header into a JSON file? Uh, can you add comments to a JSON file? I think so, with double slash. Uh, 
So that should be the right one to use. Let's see. Worst case, I'm publishing broken code and somebody will have to fix it. Yeah, the good thing is you can do rectangular selection. Yeah, it's telling me that there is a comment are not permitted in JSON. Ah, okay, so let's not do that. I'll create a new file then. And that will contain just the license tags. Is it just the license tags? Probably is, isn't it? There is no comment code. So this goes here. Now this completely destroys the idea of using pre-commit now because pre-commit will require reuse and reuse doesn't work. So I'm kind of stuck there. Um, uh, rename is not .dp, it's just files. And then duplicate. And this one is now links to prison devices. Will the use download work? Nope. Because it imports from copyright and it's the import that fails. Yeah. Fun. Ah, oh, that's going to be the next one. Uh, yeah. Oh, we have one more stream. Well, we have two more streams this week. So tomorrow I will go back to this one. Oh, no, sorry. Tomorrow I promise I will be working on the USB mount tool. Well, on the commentary details from the USB mount tool. So I'll go back to this on Friday, most likely. And then we'll see to get this released in a half decent state, at least, because I really would like to have this available to the public. Not that I expect that many people are currently living in a building that has a local CAFM for their deliveries, but it may give ideas to others. Also, it will be an interesting way if we can prop the um, all four sort of thing to have an official integration, and then we can have more than just the keys, for instance. I said earlier that I actually have gotten myself one of our Home Assistant Blue Bundles. Uh, let me show you what I mean. This is their Home Assistant Blue. Uh, the one I have is a little bit more than the $140, because you need to import it over here. But it is a very handy All Joy and Shoe Plus. I'm actually using um, Power over Ethernet to power it. It doesn't support native Power over Ethernet, but there are splitters. It's very easy to just split away the power from the Power over Ethernet. It came with Home Assistant pre-installed. I only had to make a snapshot from my running Home Assistant, save it, and then upload it during um, setup. That worked because my Home Assistant snapshot was below one gigabyte, I think it is, uh, limit. Over that, it's a bit more complicated, but not horribly complicated for what I'm told. It has eMMC, no SD cards, no issues like that. It worked very well. I haven't quite understood this thing with the cover. I think it's just like which side you want to have it like upside down or not, because you still have access to all of the plugs either way. Yeah, on that one, I just don't know what's going on. Um, I had to add Bluetooth over here. It works very nice. It, the, this is actually fairly curved. Like six watts, I don't think it ever reached six watts for me, even when I've been running everything onto it. 
Um, it's been running exclusively at Truvats, the, the splitter I got is a true amp splitter, so it can actually do 12 volts to true amps. It didn't come anywhere close to that. Um, and for where I got it, because that's interesting if you are based in the UK, it's odroid.co.uk that, that sent it to me. I like the fact that they have a sticker on the SD logo, so you don't need to see the SD logo. Um, they have a bunch of bundles. Um, the one I have is very similar to this one, but it's the Home Assistant bundle, which they may not have anymore because it may be gone. But they like they do have like both the two gigs and the four gigs version. And then considering getting a second one to rent Kodi on, because it's it's not cheap, so that's why I'm considering, and I haven't done it yet. Um, they do have a Corelac edition. There you go. This is the version that has Corelac um, pre-installed. This is not. Yeah, this is not the EMMC version though. I need to, oh, it has an industrial SD card. Well, I didn't realize that part. That may actually be interesting. Uh, I've been considering this because right now my code setup runs on a NAC and it's not quite perfect. Um, and so that part is annoying me a bit. Anyway, I think for tonight we are nearly over. Once again, this is all as a fundraiser for Cat's Protection. I don't expect I'll be streaming very regularly after this, but if people do think that the streams are interesting, please let me know. Um, so at least I know whether I should or should not be doing this. I think that this weekend I may spend even more time on Home Assistant. There are a few things that I want to do. I want to get more stuff ready to be released as well. One of the things that I would like to do and I may still work on whether part of this set of streams or not is a blueprint that allows me to blueprints are package automations for home assistant because you can automate a lot of things with home assistant that's how i send the notification to our phones when the packages are ready to collect or not but more interesting more importantly i would like an automation that if the lights are on in the office where i am right now to have them change color temp uh, light temperature like white color temperature over the course of a day because in the morning I want them brighter but I want them to start going darker as the day goes so that they don't end up at 7 p.m. if I had a last struggling meeting to still have a very cold white that wakes me up I want it to start going slowly down towards being warm candle light white later on Let's see if I can get that. That would be nice to have. Um, I guess that's it for today. We'll have more of this tomorrow, Friday, Saturday at 4.30 p.m., Sunday at 4 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, I'm starting at 4.30 and 4, um, but you can join at any time because I'm planning on going for about two hours both days. I may go further. Not going to be any less, but I may go further than that simply because there is a lot of stuff to do. And on Friday, there may or may not be some surprises coming, so that's also going to be about an hour, and maybe more. Thank you, everyone, again, and see you soon. Bye!